If you've ever wanted to buy an electric car, now might be the time because GM is offering discounts to Uber drivers. Welcome everyone, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Travel Time. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to ask that you click my face in the corner to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell icon up above so you know when I post new videos. This is a really interesting story and it benefits anyone who might be shopping for a new car, especially if you are considering an electric car. This might save you money, but we're also going to look at a few of the caveats of purchasing an electric car. So the headline reads, GM helps drivers on Uber's platform switch to electric. General Motors is teaming up with Uber to help accelerate the rideshare industry's transition to an all-electric, zero-emissions future by offering drivers on Uber's platform special pricing on the purchase of a new electric vehicle and charging accessories. This sounds like a wonderful deal. I'll tell you a little more about what the deal is, but as I said, be careful what you wish for because there are some drawbacks. Here's a quote from GM. Improving access to EVs for on-demand service providers can help reduce overall tailpipe emissions in cities across the country and help accelerate widespread EV adoption, said Sigal Cordiero, GM Executive Director of Sales and Marketing for Global Innovation. Now, I'm going to say this really does sound like a sales pitch. I don't know if GM is really all that concerned about emissions or not. But I can tell you this, the government is, and every year that goes by, they're going to tighten up those restrictions. So I think it would benefit everybody to start moving in that direction at some point. Our collaboration with Uber will facilitate drivers switch to EV, empowering these drivers, their passengers, and communities to experience electric vehicles and contribute to cleaner air in our cities. It could be an interesting thing. You have an electric vehicle, that could be a promotional tool. Now I know what you're saying, what do I care? They don't know that they're ordering an electric car when they uh, make their request. I suspect sooner than later, that is going to be an option. If passengers want an electric vehicle and there's enough in the area, I wouldn't doubt if you'll have that option of being one of those elite few that get that ride because you have an electric vehicle. That's just an assumption on my part, but I bet it's on its way. For current eligible drivers, now what it doesn't say is what a current eligible driver is. So that's one of our caveats. On the Uber platform in the United States and Canada, GM will extend the same discount it offers its employees on the purchase of a new 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EV, EV being electric vehicle. So once again, it doesn't say what is the discount that their employees get, but isn't that always the thing that um, people always want to say, oh, I wish I worked for this auto company because I could get their employee discount. Well, now you can. U.S. drivers will also have access to 20% below manufactured suggested retail price on Bolt EV accessories, including at-home charging equipment. So you're knocking 20% right off the top. What I wonder is if you already have the electric vehicle, can you still get this benefit on accessories, or is that just when you purchase a new car? This press release doesn't indicate uh, if that's so or not. Starting Los Angeles and Denver, well-qualified drivers with Uber Diamond Tier status, there you go, will also be eligible for special financing through a pilot program with GM Financial. Wait a minute. It doesn't say Diamond Tier status are the only ones that will get this offer. What it's saying, they get an additional benefit of special financing. We come up to another quote. Through this program, we're offering new ways for drivers and customers across the country to fall in love with electric driving. This is a key opportunity to grow Chevrolet's EV business through a program that matches our expertise and strength with a rideshare platform that brings its own scale and reach. So that's not really talking to us too much. That's talking more the benefit for both Uber and GM. The Chevrolet Bolt EV 
has benefited rideshare drivers for years. GM data suggests rideshare drivers can experience significantly lower maintenance costs when using a Bolt EV compared with traditional gas-powered vehicles. Drivers also cite in-vehicle technology and the spacious interior as benefits. So let's take a look at that. Obviously, you're saving on gas. Oil changes. There's probably far less maintenance on an electric engine than an internal combustion engine, right? An electric motor is just a simpler piece of equipment. I haven't uh, driven in a lot of electric cars, but it's my understanding that they have incredible acceleration. So there are some really, really nice benefits. But what I wanted to do is compare some of the most comparable, popular cars and see if we're really getting a good deal. So what we're doing here is we're going to compare the uh, Toyota Corolla, Chevy Volt, and Honda Civic. The most current information I could find is 2017. So a lot of that is going to be older tech, but nevertheless, uh, it's still apples to apples. And even though the actual numbers may have changed a little bit, I think the comparisons will still be reasonable. The biggest comparison is the price. It says here on that Bolt, it's 36,620. And when I looked that up for 2020, it hasn't changed. So roughly, that's anywhere from, oh, about 15 to 16 or 17 even thousand dollars over a comparable Civic or Corolla. That is massive. Having 15 to 17 thousand dollars, you can almost buy a second Honda Civic for that. So that's a lot of money. How does everything else play out? Overall, the Corolla gets a 7.8 rating out of 10. The Bolt gets an 8.5 out of 10. And the Civic gets an 8.6 out of 10. The cheaper car, the three, gets the better overall rating. They looked at things like what critics said, performance, interior, cost to own, safety, and so on. I'm not going to hit all of them. I'm going to hit some of the key components because across the board, the Bolt is really looking pretty good in all those categories. It's equal to or it surpasses the other two vehicles. Here is the biggest drawback as I see it. The range. It has about a, let's see what it says here for range. I'm thinking somewhere around 265 mile range, if I remember seeing that. That range is, is really going to be limiting, especially if you're going to use it for things other than rideshare. I know that if I'm going to get a long drive, for example, from Milwaukee down to O'Hare and back, I am pushing that 265 mile limit. I don't want to get stuck somewhere with an electric car. It's not like someone can carry a gallon of gas to me. It also says one of the cons is the low rent interior. So it seems like it's cheap from what I'm understanding here. And it's pricier, which I've already talked about. We're going to talk about price in a minute. I don't know what kind of resale value these have. I would take that into consideration. And battery life. I'm not sure about battery life. But the biggest drawback I'd like to talk to is that price point. When we're talking about $15,000 or more difference, if you're buying this so you don't have to buy gas anymore and you can save on gas, it's probably not a great reason to buy it because the internal combustion engine is going to be, um, I don't know if I want to say more reliable necessarily, but you're not going to have to worry about running out of fuel, whether that be electric fuel or gasoline, because you can always just pump more gas into the internal combustion engine vehicle. But you got to wait for the electric vehicle to charge. In my mind, that is the biggest drawback. But let's look at the price point. So on these cars, uh, the, the Corolla gets anywhere from 27 to about 37. That city and highway. Civic does a little better. It gets about 31 to 40. So let's say a happy medium is about 34. Let's go to 33. 33 miles a gallon. Okay. The average car, they always say 12,000 miles, 12 month, 12,000 miles. The average car goes about 10 to 12,000 miles a year. We're using this for ride shares. Let's double that. Let's go up to 20 
thousand miles. Let's say we drive 20,000 miles a year for rideshare. If that's more for you, you can do your own math. So 20,000 miles divided by 33, which we came up with our average, is about 606 gallons of gas a year. I don't know where gas is where you live. It's been pretty consistent around $2 a gallon here. I'm going to bump that to about two and a quarter because it'll cover more of the country. If you have cheaper gas, plug that in. If you're, you know, in California or Hawaii or something, this will obviously be higher price. But I'm going to multiply that 606 gallons of gas by two and a quarter. That's $13,063 a year on gas if you drive 20,000 miles a year at uh, $2.25 a gallon at 33 miles a gallon, okay? $1,363. That means, extrapolate that out by 10 years, you're only paying $13,600 in gas over 10 years, you still haven't caught up to the base price of the electric vehicle. And you still have about another $1,500 wiggle room for things like oil changes or repairs that might occur with a gas engine that doesn't happen with an electric engine. But there's still going to be repairs on the electric engine. You might have to do battery cell replacement, that sort of thing. So if you're in this because you think that it's better for the environment, if you're in this, you think it'd be cool to have an electric car, yeah, maybe those would be good reasons. Or you feel, hey, you know, when Uber and Lyft move in that direction, I'm going to be ahead of the game. I'll have an electric car. Maybe it'll help my business. But if you're doing this because you think you'll save on gas, probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to work out that way. So I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this one. If it's time to buy an electric car, at least you can save some money through the GM program. As always, I'd encourage you to like and share the video. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner. And don't forget to ring that bell icon. That way you'll know when I post new videos. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Mark and this is Mark's Travel Time.